Well, it's a super rainy day in Canberra today, but it's a great day to have a look at events. So today's video, we're looking at events. It's going to be super fun. We're finally going to do click events and do all sorts of retweeting and favoriting. It's going to be ace. Well, day six is one I've been looking forward to because we can finally start putting in some events and properties and learning about these really core concepts in Angular 2. So let's bring up where we were yesterday in our browser here and we have our nice snazzy looking timeline. Today we're going to start by doing click tracking on our retweets and favorites and we're actually going to increase our retweets and favorites as we click on them and see them dynamically update. But for that we'll need to know a little bit about events uh, first of all and then properties a little later on. So let's bring up our source code here in VS Code. Now, here we have our feed component, which has our like, which is our favorite icon over there, and our retweet icon. I'm actually going to just now add an event to these. So I'm going to catch the click event for this like. And when, it, when that's clicked, I'm going to invoke a method in our backing class. And in our case, the method will be called on favorite. And then also on this retweet, I'm going to catch the click event on that as well. And in that case, I'm going to invoke a, a method on the backing class called on retweet. OK, so I'll save those, but I'll need to implement those methods in the backing class for good things to happen. So on favorite, favorite with the American spelling. I don't know how that happened, but we'll stick with it now. And on retweet. And all we'll do for now is maybe a console log. So we can just feel like there's some progress happening here. Favorites. And we'll console log this. Uh, retweets. That'll do for now. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to my console, wait for it to refresh. I'll have my console here on the right. Now I'm going to click favorites. Oh, yes. Excellent. The more I click it, it's invoked many times, retreats. Awesome, fantastic. So that's working great. But that's really no good yet because all that gives us is the fact that it has been clicked. What happens when we click favorite or retweet is we'd like our user to be added to these retweets. So I think we should do that next. So let's go into here. We will need to, when this is favorited, we'll, we'll need to actually have an access to the tweet that's been clicked on though. So at the moment we pass nothing in, but what we'd like is the actual tweet that we're looking at right now. Now this is inside an ng4, you remember, where we iterate over all our tweets, putting them one at a time. So we're going to pass that tweet, which is the current tweet that they're clicking on, directly into our backing method. So now when we call these, we will have actually the tweet that they've clicked on. And if we want to get, you know, I feel like we're making, you know, a bit of progress here. Why don't I um, just output that here. So then we should be able to see at least which one we're actually clicking on. Now this tweet will be one of these objects that we had in our array. So let's just try that for now. In fact, there it is. So we click retweet, we see retweets, and then we see the object, which has got our date and our array of retweets and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so what we want to do is when they've actually clicked on it, we, don't, we want to push basically the current user onto our list of favorites. So we'll go tweet dot favorites dot uh, push and I'll need some way of getting the current user but for now I'll just hard code it because that's just how I roll. So tweet dot I think this was called retweets uh, and we'll push ourselves onto that array as well of retweets and I'll just put Glenn in there as well. Fantastic. So now when we do this, we should find that not only does our click event push it on there, push it on our list of favorites or list of retweets, but our view should re-render re this length property, which is the size of that array. So it should get longer. So let's give it a try and see what happens. Favorites. Yeah, that's gone to one. Favorites, two, three, four, five. Retweets, rocking it. Look at that. That is amazing. So we've got that happening. Now it would be kind of handy if I couldn't add myself really more than more than once. So why don't we just add a bit of a convenience method? It's already noticeable that we should be refactoring this into some kind of service, but we haven't covered that yet. So let's just add a method is user in collection. We can pass in a collection, which is our uh, array of strings. 
uh, and we can maybe have the user ID, which is of type string. So this is TypeScript. If you haven't bumped into it before, you put the type of the object to the right. So this is saying user ID is of type string, collection is of type string array. And then at the end here, you put the return value for the method. So in our case, we're returning a Boolean if user is in collection. This is a pretty uh, one liner though, really. We just, just can return collection dot uh, index of user ID uh, is not equal to minus one, which is not found. That's all we need to return, actually. So, but you know, it's a little bit nice convenience. So we can say now we can say if uh, not is user in collection tweet dot favorites comma Glenn. Well, if Glenn's not in there, then let's push him on there. Uh, and then I can use the, oh, I've got to say that this is a method. So this dot is a user in collection. And then down here, same for our retweets. I've got to pop that in there. So we have that, uh, in this case, it's the retweets I want to check. Save that. So now we have some uh, tracking here to make sure it's not already in the collection. So I should only be able to click this once. Favorite one. Yes, fantastic. Retweet one, two, that's good because it allowed me in once, but not again. I'm gonna leave this video there for today to keep these nice and tight. So have a play with events and see how that's going. Then I'm gonna part, post part two of this video, which looks at properties, and we're gonna do some styling around those retweet buttons to make sure they're dynamically style with some CSS classes, and that's gonna be great. So we're gonna do that in part two of this video, but go play.